in this video, I'll be showing you some of the best VS Code extensions. This is each and everything, gosh. And let's get to those extensions. First, at number one is Pretty, or Peter is an opinionated code formatter. I have it set up so that every time I save, it formats my code. Check out this demo over here. I've added a bunch of extra spaces. I've removed semicolons and added extra lines. When I go ahead and save, it formats the document to remove those spaces and extra lines so that the format stays consistent. For more details, check out my video on how to install, configure and customize PrettyR. Second, next up we have Code Spell Checker. This extension is an awesome spell checker. It really does cut down spelling mistakes and prevents those embarrassing spelling mistakes and pull requests. It supports English and many more languages. You can even add custom dictionaries. Here's a quick demo of the spell checker. As you can see, I've spelled player incorrectly. It's also taking into consideration the camel casing. If I fix this word, it will not only change this word, but this word over here. We'll click on the and then on player, and both words are corrected. For more details on how to install and configure Code Spell Checker, check out my video. Third, next, we have ESLint. It's a static code analysis tool for identifying problems in your JavaScript code. With this extension, we'll highlight those problems, provided you have ESLint installed in the workspace or globally. Here is an example of an ESLint issue. As you can see, it's underscored it in red because I've put two dots. If we put our mouse over it, we'll see parsing error, unexpected token, ESLint. Fourth, Error Lens is a perfect companion to Spellcheck, or ESLint, and other extensions that add language diagnostics. It'll highlight the entire line when possible and show the error message in line. With Error Lens enabled, you can see our lines are now being highlighted. ESLint rules are highlighted in red and it shows us the message on the right hand side. Spell check errors are highlighted in blue. And the message is also on the right hand side. This means we no longer need to hover our mouse over the error to see the error message. Fifth, the Materials Icon theme extension updates your Explorer icons to Material icons, which look so much nicer. Plus, you get a better folder icon. This is the default icon theme for VS Code over here. It's not too bad. I don't particularly like the folders. Let's go ahead and switch over to the material icon theme. When we do that, we get proper folders. Depending on the name of the folder, you might get a different image. For example, the sounds. We have a React application with components and we get these really nice bright coloured icons. Sixth, the Live Server extension allows you to launch a local development server with a live reload. This is awesome for coding HTML and JavaScript. Personally, I use this for JavaScript game development. Take this example of a Space Invaders game I coded. In tutorial, you can take my YouTube channel that I will link in the description. We can start a web development server by right-clicking on the index, HTML file and clicking on Open with Live Server. Then we can go ahead and make a change to the CSS and press the Save button. And you'll see that the page automatically was reloaded. A seventh, we have Auto Rename Tag, which is a feature that I wish VS Code had. But luckily there's this extension. Without this extension, if I go ahead and rename this div to a span, it won't rename the closing tag. With the extension enabled, if I rename this from a div to a span, it will also rename the closing tag. Eighth, have you ever worked with more than one project with different VS Code windows? It can get confusing which is which. 
Here's a simple solution to have a different colour for each VS Code window using an extension called Peacock. With Peacock, we can easily set a different colour for each window. For example, we can go ahead and open the command palette, type Peacock and select a change to a favourite colour to select a different colour for this VS Code window. As you can see over here, I have different VS Code windows, and each one is visually distinct with its different colour, making it easy to identify different projects. Ninth, another time-saving extension is Auto Open Markdown Preview. This extension will automatically open the Markdown Preview. Let's take a look at this. If we go to our Explorer and we click on the README on the left-hand side, we can see we have edit mode and on the right hand side we get our preview. This is great for editing and when you want to read the README in a formatted state. Tenth, another great markdown extension was Markdown All-in-One. This one adds a whole bunch of great shortcuts. For example, we can go ahead and bold this text just like we would in Word. We can also italicize the text. For the headers at the top of the screen over here, I can cycle through those just using my keyboard. For more information, check out the great documentation for the keyboard shortcut and the many features that it provides. 11. Have you ever been in that situation where you need to run a code snippet? Well, VS Code has an extension called Code Runner. Code Runner can run code snippets for many different languages from C to a language called Zig. Once you install the Code Runner extension, you're going to have this play button at the top. We have this JavaScript file over here, and we're going to go ahead and run it. When we run it, we're going to get our console output. 12. Speaker 1, row 512. Next up, we have a just extension, and it says use Facebook, suggest with pleasure, and indeed, it is a pleasure to use. Once installed, you're going to get this test speaker icon on the left hand side. Once you click it, you're going to see a list of your test and the status for each test. From here, you can also run your test normally or in debug mode. Inside of your test file, you'll also get an icon beside each test which indicates the status. If you click on it, it will run the test. If you right click, you can select between run test and debug test. 13. The next extension can also run just test and it's called just runner. This extension adds a run button and debug button above each test. 14. Use simple React snippets extension to increase your productivity in a React. As you can see from the great documentation, there are a lot of different snippets you can use. Let's say that we're creating a header component and we want to quickly create it. Well, we can type FFC which stands for Function Syntax Component. Hit Tab. It creates two cursors where we can type Header. Hit Escape and then quickly add our div over here, which will be our header. Fifteenth, GitHub Copilot is an AI pair programmer right in your IDE. It can suggest lines or entire functions to write. GitHub Copilot uses a special version of GBT3 that has been trained on a large body of public source code. I've used GitHub Copilot in the past and found it very useful. Unfortunately, it's no longer free and requires a monthly subscription. For a quick introduction, check out my GitHub Copilot video. 16th, the IntelliCode extension is an AI assistant for Python, TypeScript, JavaScript, and Java. IntelliCode is an AI-boosted upgrade to the built-in IntelliSense code completion feature of VS Code. It uses AI to provide more accurate suggestions for code completion. It does this by analyzing a developer's code context to make these better suggestions. 
It is not as powerful as GetUp Copilot. However, it is free. 17th. If you're writing any YAML in VS Code, install the YAML extension immediately as it will provide you with YAML validation, auto-completion, and more. 18th. The next few extensions focuses on Git, the version control system. The first extension is GitLens, Git Supercharged, as you can tell from the ITIT adds a ton of features to VS Code. Personally, I have only used a few of them, and I keep discovering new ones. Most of the features are free, and a few of them require a plan. The first feature is Git Blame. As you can see on each line, it lets me know who the last developer was to edit that line. Another feature that I find very useful within GitLens is or all the extra tabs that we get within our source control area to see our commits, branches, remotes, dashes, and more. The next feature that I enjoy is the graphical representation of our commit history. Unfortunately, this feature does require a plan. However, we can fix that by using a different extension. 19th. The Git History extension allows you to see a graphical representation of your Git history. By going to your Source Control tab and clicking on this icon, we can see the graphical representation of our Git history. From the screen, you're able to perform various actions like creating a new branch, tag and more. Unlike GitLens Supercharge, this version is free. 20. Another extension that's similar to Git History is Git Graph. Git Graph can be accessed the same way by going to your Source Control tab, clicking on this icon over here. As you can see, we have a graphical representation of our Git History. From here, we can perform various actions just like Git History. 21. Lastly, we have VS Code Pets, which is a really fun extension. With this extension, you are able to have pets within your VS Code. After you install the extension, you can go to your Explorer where you should be able to see your pets on the left-hand side. You can add more pets by clicking the plus and selecting a pet. There are so many amazing VS Code extensions. Let me know what your favourites are in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button, subscribe and hit that notification bell.